LX97, LX80, LX80 Vario, the I80 Vario, and the I80 indicator. The LX9000 and LX8000 range can be very confusing. We've got the full range here, starting with the LX9070, which is the biggest, LX9000, we've got the LX9050, the LX8040, and the LX8030. And then we've got the Varios to go with them. So we've got the V8 Vario, the V80, and the i8 repeater. In this video, I'm going to show you the full range of the LXNav Live computers and the electronic Varios to go with them. And we're going to explain the difference between the model numbers to help you decide which is the right option for you and your glider. First, let's start with the basics. The LX9000 and 8000 range always comes with a variometer. The Vario contains the clever sensors which provide the Vario readings, the artificial horizon, wind calculations and pressure data. That all gets fed to the display unit through the connected harness. We'll go into a bit more detail about the differences between the various Vario options later. But first, let's start with the LX8030. The LX8030 is the easiest way to get the full features of the LX Glide computer range with minimal installation effort. So if you've got an old 90s Vario such as an LX5000, LX7000, an old Cambridge LNAV or SNAV, or even if you've got the older version of this which is the LX8080, you can generally get one of these installed within a day. It's got an 80mm, 57mm unit, it's a relatively straightforward swap and then you've just got to install the electronic harness and connect up the plumbing and you're good to go. One of the most common questions we get is should I go for the LX8030 or the S100? The 8030 has more features, more connectivity options and more upgradability than the standalone Vario range. My personal favourites are the voice module, which I believe significantly reduces my workload in the cockpit, the SkySight forecast through LXNav Connect and the rainfall radar coming onto the display in the cockpit. For me, all of these features would push me towards one of these over the standalone Vario range if your budget can stretch to it. The LX8030 has an entry level spec known as the club version, which removes some of the software options and that helps to bring the price down as well. And these software options can always be added later as your budget grows. The LX8040 is the easiest upgrade for those of you with an old LX8000. It fits within the same physical footprint but gives you a slightly larger display thanks to these cutouts. Uh, it's particularly useful in older DG gliders where space is limited, uh, but yeah, mainly for those of you with old LX8000s, I'd say consider upgrading to the 8040. Now, to make the screens bigger on these two units, LXNav did away with the SD card reader on the front bezel. As a result, they decided to include Wi-Fi within the, the price as standard, so you can easily upload your flights or download firmware updates using a Wi-Fi network or the hotspot on your phone. Or if you'd rather have a physical way of connecting to them, for example, you can't get good Wi-Fi signal uh, to your glider, then they've still got the USB stick, USB port on the back, so you can connect via USB stick to upload files or download files that way. Here we've got the LX9050, and in some gliders, this is the largest display that it's possible to fit in, particularly in older DGs or some older LS gliders where space is a premium. This has got the width of an 80 millimeter instrument. So if you can stack two 80 mil instruments on top of each other, the chances are you can fit one of these in. While I've got these three on the table, it's worth mentioning that all of these are available in the club version, which just helps bring that initial investment down and you can then upgrade the functionality later. That's not the case for the next two. And next up, the LX9000. Now this was the original large display. This is a 5.6 inch screen and it's easier for navigating than the smaller displays. However, you'll very likely need to extensively modify your panel to get it to fit in. In some cases, you may even need to downsize some of your 80 mil instruments to 57s just to get that into the panel. If you walk down an 80 meter or open class competition grid, you'll very likely find many of these in the instrument panels. And the first generation has been around since 2010 and we're now onto the fifth generation, which is this one. Next up, we've got the big boy which is the LX9070. The LX9070 has a seven inch display, which is notably bigger than the LX9000. That gives you ample space to display the map or as many nav boxes as you like. Uh, the difference in price is only about 350 pounds plus fat. So most people, if they're able to consider between the two, they tend to go for the larger screen. Nowadays, it's become the industry standard for brand new gliders. When you're selecting between these two, 
really the main deciding factor is whether you can fit in the height of the screen. The width is exactly the same. And as I say, on most modern gliders, you can now fit in the LX9070. On a lot of older Schempherth gliders, like older Discuses or Ventuses, you can quite often fit the 9070 in as well. Um, but on those that you can't, you should be able to get the 9000 in. Nowadays, they come with the touchscreen hardware as standard, uh, but the touchscreen functionality can be enabled by software later on, which is really the LX Nav ethos. They want to give you the hardware at the lowest possible price, but if you don't want the functionality, you don't need to pay for it. If you do further down the line, it's just a software upgrade to get it working. The current range of variometers are the V8, which is a 57 mil unit, and the V80, which is an 80 mil unit. The only real difference between the two is the larger display of the V80. And that just gives you a bit more space for nav boxes, uh, or you can get a larger artificial horizon, wind indicator, thermal assistant, or flam radar. You may also have heard of the V5 or V9 Vario. These are the older generation Varios, and quite often they can be upgraded to one of these later generation. But we're not done yet. For every LX9070 or 8030, there is a D version, which is the rear seat repeater. This can be interacted completely independently from the front unit, and so can display completely different numbers, nav boxes, artificial horizon or radars, but it takes the same sensor data from the V8. You can also use different size models between the front and rear seat. So if you can fit an LX9070 in the front panel, but you can only fit an 8030 in the rear, that, that will work absolutely fine. The rear seat repeater also comes with a Vario indicator, such as the i8, or its bigger brother, the i80. Again, the only difference between these is the size of the display. All of these devices have the same features and much of the same hardware. These display units can all be upgraded with built-in flam, remote sticks, mop sensors, flap sensors, etc. And they also have the same software upgradability, such as Hawk, Wi-Fi, and AHARS. The only difference hardware-wise is the LX8040 and 8030 can't be optioned with a touchscreen. In terms of difference in price, at the time of shooting, the club version of the LX8030 starts at about 2,000 plus fat and the LX9070 starts at about £4,300 plus fat. All of the hardware and software upgrades are priced the same. Thank you for watching our comparison of the LX range. Which one would you choose for your glider? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't seen it already, you can watch our unboxing video of the LX9070 by clicking here. Or you can watch us install a pair of LX9050s in an Ash25 by clicking here. Subscribe to our channel for more videos on the LX9000 range where we start to deep dive into some of our favourite features.